What's going on, everyone? Welcome to another episode of For the Love of Cinema, a movie podcast where our motto is, we just hope it doesn't suck. This episode... Sometimes it does. Sometimes it does. This episode 355, broken up into two parts, A and B. B? Thank you. 355A, posting on 11.7, will be discussion on Five Nights at Freddy's. And 355B, posting on 11.10, will be discussion on Pain Hustlers with Chris Evans and Emily Blunt, available on Netflix. I'm one of your hosts, Grayson Maxwell, and Roger is MIA for the week. I'll tell you why in a minute. And we have our lovely perma guest, Chris Bond. Chris, how are you today? Before you answer, we got to come up with a reason that Roger is gone. What do you want to say? <laughs> Uh, he absolutely. Remember, he's the one that suggested you were running naked in the wheat field. So now is your time to exact revenge on him. I mean, he was outside with his shirt off in the cold weather. His nipples got so hard and he fell down. He scraped one off, had to go to the hospital and have it replaced with a piece of his thigh fat. That's what happened. That is there. 100% true. That's why he's not All here right, today. See? All that. Exactly. Okay. Also on that note, uh, just to let the audience know that Grayson's going to come in hot both episodes because he has to make up for two and a half people this time. So. Yeah, that's what I'll do. That's what I'm going to do. Yeah. Indeed. How are you this week? I'm only, uh, I'm only half here. That's, that's what it is. Are you naked? Are you are pants optional today? Pants are always optional. <laughs> you, know, about, you texted me. What did you text me back? You said, hold on. No, no. You said, what, what was the term you used? Um, I said pants optional and you said. I said, I said, I think I said uh, prohibited. Oh, downright prohibited. I'm telling you, I don't know if there's, I don't know if it's out there, but if there's a podcast, it's, 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 it's just podcast colon pants prohibited. I'll bet you, you could talk about whatever you wanted, and that would be an insanely popular podcast all the time. I bet you, it's, I bet you, its first two episodes gets at least 20, 20 k views each, just yeah, for the it's, title. At, alone. at least, that's what I'm saying. Just the title alone will will do it. But yeah, podcast colon pants prohibited or the pants prohibited podcast. Like you have, you have you have the P alliteration thing going on. It would just be very popular. Yeah, yeah. yeah or like even that. one that's it's like no no pants allowed. Well, whatever. Anything to do with removing the pants, I think would be very mm-hmm. popular. I mean, anything with removing pants usually is popular. Honestly. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. What's going on for you for the Bond household this week? Oh, everyone's sick in my house. It's great. Um, uh, everyone has this. Everyone has this cough that they're dying from. My daughter hasn't slept good in, in a week and a half. Yeah, no, it's been fantastic. My house is happy and cheery. Dude, that's the worst. I don't, like, that's the one thing. One of the few things I'm like, you know, I, I don't have kids. Like, I'm kind of glad because of this reason. It's like, you know when your kid comes home sick, you're going to get it. Do you ever have that dread of, like, oh, another sickness? Like, just go oh, yeah. over the other one. Like, you just know you're going to get sick. You just know it, right? Dude, I, dude, I have kids. As soon as as soon as soon one of my kids cough, uh, you just you just hear the, the, the line from the movie. Here we, oh, shit. Here we go again because <laughs> it's just going to happen. So yeah, no, absolutely. And, I know what and, you're talking and, about. And soon you're gonna do the Danny Glover. I'm too old for this shit. But you're not. You're not too old yeah. yet. You're not too old yet. I don't know. That's a matter of opinion. I feel old. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, I'm, I wonder. I wonder how. I have two waters. I have the end. I have the last half of a, of a smart water. Which, by the way, I want to talk about something for one second. Um, yeah, go ahead. I know you're not a fan of the movie theater subscription model. You 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 have not. Have, we, have you subscribed to the AMC yet? I have not because I still go to Marquee a good bit. So okay, to so me, I think it would, it, 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 would, it would currently be a net loss for me, I think. The the theater in uh, Brighton, which is about 20 minutes away from Lewis, Brighton a, is a pretty big city. It, it is the Pittsburgh to the bigger London, which would be, the, I guess, the Columbus of the area that we, we live in. But okay. So they have the Odeon, which is it's a pretty historic theater, but it's in multiple levels. It's really cool. It's kind of like a maze inside. But the, the monthly fee is... Sixteen ninety nine. You can watch as many movies as you want. It doesn't say like AMC does up to twelve a month. You can watch for sixteen ninety nine as many movies as you want. And mm-hmm. I had two. I want to say I had two. I don't know how big they're. They're bigger than the smart water. They're bigger than the normal size. They're like their next size up that you'd normally buy. So we got two okay. smart waters, a popcorn, and a candy. How much do you think that was? I mean, in how euros would, or or how, dollars. How, how how much would that be in the U.S. at AMC? Oh, it, oh it'd be like twenty two easy. That was ten dollars. Jeez, okay. <laughs> two big bottles of water, a candy, and a popcorn was ten dollars. Listen, like, I went to the last time I went to Marquee and got and, and got water, like a bottle of water. I asked them how much it was, and <laughs> she got out that Dasani water, looked me dead in the eyes, and said six dollars. Yeah, dude. <laughs> oh my god. It's, yeah. I don't actually laugh. Just swipe your card and walk. <laughs> you'll, you'll, you'll just be you'll just be sad if you know. Just 
no, no. Listen. So, so, so here's what I did. This is a good story. So I said, I said, I handed her the water ba- bottle back. I said, no, thank you. And then just got my ticket, and and that was, and just got my ticket. Walked to the walked to the movie. There was only like one other person in there. So as the pre- previews were on, I got up, I walked out to my car, I found a a cup from like a Starbucks drink or something from before. It wasn't even Starbucks, I don't think. Walked inside, walked to the bathroom, filled up the sink water, and went and sat down in the theater and drank that. Look, there I was mean, no way. I'm never going to condone bringing food, but like, I it's, will. It's just too damn expensive. Like, I don't care who you are. There's no way that you can just. There's there's no way you can justify six bucks for a Dasani bottle. That's six. You you better be you you better be buying fifty ounces of water for six bucks. L- well, listen. I'll pay that thirteen dollars for that pack of Sour Patch Kids, whatever. But when you hand me a Dasani water that I know I can go next store and get for a dollar nineteen, there's no way. I agree, it's man. Just, I, it's I no agree. way. It's weird. I have this thing going on. I have this episode planned, and another. I'm doing a, a guest appearance on another podcast about movie theater, like concession pricing. It's just mm-hmm. I've been working on my own menu, so I want to I want to kind of debut on this podcast before I take it elsewhere. But I've been working on it for a while, and like I just I. I really do think if AMC doesn't change the being the biggest theater chain in North America, that's going to be one of the reasons why they fail is their concessions are just oh, yeah. too, too, too damn much. Like it just, it's they're They're trying to make 10,000% on a popcorn instead of just being happy with 500% profit on popcorn. Like they're just trying yeah. to be too greedy with it. And I could, I could, I worked movie theater for like 15 years, man. I could go on and on about all the crazy shit that I saw in the movie theater. Like, foot long subs they somehow got past you know whole box <laughs> large pizzas from Domino's. they somehow snuck in the theater i don't, I don't know Hell how they do yeah. that um you usually I, got i mean to get the whole, to get the whole pizza in man you usually got to know a guy you know what i mean like, well, like that's okay, the only yeah, way that's that fair. happens right i found like big kfc chicken buckets like like all, all the chicken was eaten there was like bones like obviously like a <laughs> massive it was like a massive chicken bucket meant for like a family of four and it's all just like how do you people get those in and that's the flex at the end, right? Because these people are capable of taking that and throwing it in the trash can, especially if they don't want to get caught, right? But no, they snuck that in. They're eating that chicken, enjoying their movie, and they're like, I'm going to leave this right And then they leave it there. Seat. Yeah. And they leave it there. So whoever <laughs> finds it goes, these sons of bitches got Hun- KFC. Sons of bitches. <laughs> Wait, so I was going to go, I have, I wonder how this is going to go, because I have the second half of Smart Water, and because I am feeling pinky up today, I have a bottle Ooh. of Perrier. Um, what do you what carbonated water? So I wonder, and I'm gonna do oh, when I when I open the parry, I'm gonna do it on the on live. So it's gonna be oh, okay. I, I mean, you're way fancier fancier than I am. I have I have two monster rehabs and two pepperoni rolls. That's what I'm rocking. That's Good my God, breakfast man. and lunch of champions. Jeez, geez, Louise, um, that's right, dude. I love you. You got you got to change your eating habits a little bit. <laughs> Just saying, no, I don't, no, I don't see, want your listen, heart to stop I, soon. Listen, I've gotten through 35 years this way. I don't think there's anything wrong until there's something wrong. You know what I mean? I mean, yeah, sure. Yeah. I mean, that's the way to look at it, I guess. But this week I watched, uh, I did, I'd watched All the Light You Cannot See on Netflix, which I think we're going to talk about next week, so I'll save my, uh, but. It looks I, interesting. Was, it looks interesting, and it is interesting. However, there's parts, it's pros and cons for everything, but I, I, I was happy with it when it, when it ended. It is, it is the Grayson version of a World War II miniseries. If that that'll make sense <laughs> when, you, when, when you watch it, that'll make more sense when you watch it. Um, yeah, also, watch so there's pl- there, there's plenty of heroic sacrifice, plenty of plenty of crying, inducing scenes. Got it. Understood. There, well, there's a blind girl. There's a German soldier who's trying to save a blind girl. There, uh, yeah, right there. Oh there's my like God. complete. Oh I my love, God. I love it. Um, I did. You know, something else I watched. Uh, I did watch again this week the Prestige, which I think I I wholly will argue that 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 is that is one of the quintessential films of 2000 to 2020 uh the prestige mm-hmm. if, if, I've if never seen it with nolan uh, if there's a list of 10 movies from tw- those 20 years that's got to be on it um, yeah i mean listen I'm, I'm waiting for you to tell me what movie i absolutely have to watch so you'll finish well, I'm watching trying a to great narrow, i'm show. trying to narrow it down but um Just i watched that one. again and i watched the try uh it's martin freeman's in it i feel it was called it's the eichmann trial or the trial of eichmann where you're you're watching a movie on the um you're watching a, a, a movie on the trial of Adolf Eichmann when he in 1960 when he was brought back to well he was brought to Israel and he was found in Argentina he was brought and then Martin Freeman and Anthony LaPagna and a whole camera crew this is their the story of them putting on the trial for the world to see it's one of the first trials that like 
oh go go to camera three go to camera one you know all the the one of the most famous the first famous trial televised i think it was oh, okay yeah, yeah. But it's a very interesting story of how that came about and martin freeman is always amazing so um that is on that's on amazon prime i think you can rent it for like a dollar uh but yeah that was that was an interesting interesting watch i do recommend that one too but Chris, we we watched uh, some stuff for this week, so we we did watch stuff. We, we, did, we did that. We watched stuff. Let's talk about one of them right now. This is episode three hundred and fifty-five of For the Love of Cinema, a podcast about movies, film, and cinema. It was posted each and every Tuesday and Friday morning at five a.m. Which then distributes to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and Amazon Music. Each and every week, we start with the box office, current and upcoming releases, what streaming trailers and movies of the week. Without further ado, let's look at the box office and mm-hmm. an interesting box office it is. How because Five Nights at Freddy's again took the number one spot, nineteen point four million, bringing its worldwide. And to keep in mind that with this number, it also debuted on Peacock. You can watch it for free on streaming. Two hundred seventeen million, just over two hundred seventeen million worldwide, which Damn. I think is phenomenal. For a movie that Damn. got, yeah, you're not kidding. That, that's I, knocking on the door I, I, of Taylor Swift, by the way. That's knocking I, on the door. I would like to, I would like to say that I, I like sideways called this. I told you the FNAF, the FNAF community would come out for this. Well, no, no, absolutely, I, that, the, the, no. Roger was one that said they would. You and I were like, ah, no, no, no. five nights no, 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 going. No, no, no. no. R- Roger said that that it would do gangbusters, uh, like for opening, but like it's it's just trucking along still it, it, it's it staying it strong is. because you know it does have a loyal fan base it is and i keep well, i keep going to twitter and watching that there's that fight that breaks out it, you, you should watch that if you haven't that's pretty, that's pretty <laughs> hilarious you, you should send it to me yeah because yeah, I, 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 I don't have a twitter i can't see that. oh that's right but it, it is a, it, some dude just wailing on someone behind them i think because they wouldn't be quiet during the whole thing oh but, no i'm yeah. sure <laughs> All right, that's number one. Number two, Taylor Swift, The Eras Tour, another 13.5 million domestic, bringing us worldwide to 231. Now, Taylor Swift, as, a, as monstrous as she is, Five Nights at Freddy's is 15 million behind her, and Five Nights I was at Freddy's say, it debuted on streaming as well. It was also available yeah. to watch for free. Yeah, so yeah, it's on pace, to, it's on pace to pass it easily. Yeah, so that's that's mind blowing, man. I can't believe that. Mm-hmm. Number three, Killers of the Flower Moon, another seven million. Won't won't bring us worldwide to 119 million. That that is, keep in mind that we talked about that a couple weeks ago. That had a 200 million dollar budget. You know who isn't upset? To who you know who isn't terribly upset that that movie isn't making the gangbusters? Who's who's not terribly upset? The director, because I, I I I think he just wants the accolades for it. If anything, I'm, I'm sure, and I'm sure he'll I'm sure he'll get them. However, oh yeah. I was reading an article saying that wasn't really they didn't that was an Apple film, same with Napoleon. Now Napoleon has them worried because it was it was only ever meant for streaming anyway, so they were just trying to cover the budget, but like the movie didn't even yeah. get the budget back. So Yeah. But so I think, so I mean like I think, like I think Napoleon will, will have a much broader reach than Killers of the I Flower mean, Moon. If it, but... If it's three hours and a, three and a half hours long, I think it'll probably do about the same. I think it's the length of the movie that kills it for people on that one. But like, also, what does it hurt them to put it out in theaters, right? Like, if they have it on on their streaming service, whatever. But like, what does it really cost them that much more to put it in theaters and get money back on it at that point? It, it does, especially this this time of year. It's very expensive this time of year to put stuff in the theater. Absolutely. Okay. Um, all things may have changed since when I when I really had a better grasp on that, like two thousand three, two thousand four, two thousand five, when I was talking yeah, yeah. to like movie reps and um, studio reps when they would come in and like, and my, my manager knew, like I, it's been a while. Stuff may have changed with the streaming era, but I, it can't have changed that much. Anyway, Priscilla, number four, 5.1 million. Remember this is about the, when, when teenage Priscilla Bellew meets Elvis Presley, the man who's already a meteoric mm-hmm. rock and roll superstar becomes someone entirely unexpected in private moments, a thrilling crush and ally and loneliness, a vulnerable friend. Um, that's only doing $5.3 million <laughs> worldwide. <laughs> That's, oh no I, yeah oh no is right that's not doing well it's, it's a shame though yeah, we, we, it's quite good so you know what that means it means i don't have to watch it so that's, that's all right point. radical number five a movie you've never heard of 2.7 million <laughs> <laughs> well i never i mean before today i never heard of it it's a teacher in, in in a mexican border town full of neglect corruption and violence tries a radical new method to unlock their students curiosity and potential and maybe even their genius but it's doing better than priscilla with a worldwide of 7.8 didn't so, they make that movie before? I'm just sure with different people. Oh, oh, I, I, I don't know. No, there, there's there's a movie about a about a a, a guy, a, a teacher, a man comes into a school of underprivileged kids and like 
teaches them math and something, and like they end up like doing really good at it. That's like a that's like an older movie. Isn't that a Morgan Freeman movie? I th- maybe. I, think I don't is. know for I, sure. I, I think it's called Lean on Me. I think it is. I don't. I don't. I don't want to hard commit to that. Yes, but I. Th- I think it's somewhere in that ballpark. Yeah. Yeah, that, was, that would have been the eighties. Yeah, that, that sounds about right. Uh, number six through ten: Exodus, Believer, After Death, Paw Patrol, The Mighty Movie, What Happens Later, and Freelance. Let's see where Paw Patrol. I'm just curious how much money that actually made because that was meant for. That's going to go on to what Paramount Plus or does Paramount Plus even exist anymore? Mm-hmm. Uh, Paramount Plus is phasing itself out. It still mm-hmm. exists currently, though. Interesting. 181 million worldwide. That's pretty good for that. So that's not bad. I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure the budget was much lesser than most, um, than most movies. So there's your uh, one through five, which is Five Nights at Freddy's, Taylor Swift, The Eras Tour, Killers of the Flower Moon, Priscilla, and Radical. I don't think anyone really expected any a whole lot of change on that one. Uh, let's segue a little bit. Let's go into upcoming releases. Look at look at what's well upcoming releases. Then what's streaming? Mm-hmm. Here's the thing about the upcoming release schedule. Uh, not great. Uh, uh-huh. <laughs> this past weekend, November 3rd, brought us The Marsh King's Daughter, Priscilla, and What Happens Later. November 10th, The Holdovers and The Marvels. November 17th, The Hunger Games, The Bout of Songbirds and Snakes, Next Goal Wins, Thanksgiving, and Trolls Band Together. The, something on, I want to just talk about briefly, Chris, for a second. Um, with Next Goal Wins, I think that's Taika, Taika Watiti's movie. I think uh, I just saw some stories that. Um, um, Marvel is done with him. Uh, I mean, I think you're about to see a lot of thing, a lot of a lot of personalities shift away from Marvel, whether by their own doing or by Marvel's doing. I I, I, I think you're right, and the one I've been follow well follow loosely, but I know that um, uh, who's Loki? What's it? Tom Hiddleston? He is not happy. Tom Hiddleston. About. He is absolutely no. not. He's trying to actively get out of his contract. Um, have you that, watched? Have you watched Loki yet? I've I haven't, but the people that have watched dude, me have listen. told me like, dude, don't even worry about it. It's awful. It's terrible. It, it, it's it is. Listen, I I think there are more scenes of people sitting down and eating and talking than there are of actual like meaningful dialogue exchange or action. It's it's bad. That's terrible. It has not man. been entertaining. Jeez. It's it's been boring and it's been a slog. And I was a huge fan of the first season of Loki. Like like unhealth unhealthily so well it was, well the first season wasn't bad and, and it set up some cool kind of r- new rules to that world and what could be done with with loki and from what i hear it's just look i i mean i can't comment one i've never seen it it's on my list i just i've not heard good thing even from the marvel faithful i have some friends that are die hard marvel fans that have that mm-hmm. only recently have been saying okay things need to change absolutely need to change oh, yeah. or i'm done oh yeah so I think you're going to see a lot of things changing soon. Uh, September, November 22nd, the day before Thanksgiving, Napoleon and Disney's Wish. December 1st, uh, Godzilla Minus One Renaissance, a film by Beyonce and Silent Night. Uh, please note that the Bike Riders, which was currently scheduled for December 1st, moved to 20, March 2024. December 8th. Uh, I'm excited for this week. I know you are too. The Boy and the Heron. That's going to be at Studio Ghibli. Releasing. <laughs> yep, yep. That's about the only thing I'm excited for in December now. I got to be honest about that. Well, maybe yeah. Godzilla minus one. We'll uh, see. I, 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 for some reason, I have a weird feeling that it's just going to be the uh, the the first Godzilla reboot movie that came out uh, in the last like ten years. I think it's, I feel like it's just going to be like that. You're going to see very little Godzilla. You're going to get like one or two big scenes, and that's it. So we'll see if well, it's entertaining. This should, this should be the third or fourth one recently. So since I since I think 2014. So we'll see where that goes. Wonka, December fifteenth, December twenty second. Anyone but you with handsome Glenn. Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom and Migration. See, that's another one that, like, I, that's a big, like, why would you, I don't know. I feel like that's like a, oh, well, just throw it there. It's fine. Uh, keep in yeah, mind, yeah. That also, the Iron Claw comes out, very limited release in theaters. I know we talked about that. Um, the Wrestling Family, we talked about that one recently. Um, and 25th, which is Christmas Day, The Boys in the Boat, The Color Purple, and Ferrari. By the way, Ferrari looks pretty badass as a trailer. I don't know if you saw that. But yeah, yeah. Yep. Looks pretty awesome. Uh, so there's your release schedule. I just I'm not really excited for things this holiday season. I'm just this is probably one of the first holiday seasons since I've been alive. I'm just like I don't I just don't care about anything. Yeah, and, and I don't I don't know if that's movies or it's me. I, I I can't tell. Could be both. Could be a little bit of both. Sure, sure. Um, let's talk about what's streaming on Disney Plus. Um, let's. let's. Uh, you know I'm gonna so Stuber is a movie that. Uh, directed by Michael Dowles. Dave Bautista 
Kumail Nunjani, Miro Sorvino, Natalie Morales, Betty Gilpin, Karen Gillan, 2019. I think Stuber was hilarious, but all the humor is absolutely geared around a 20s, anywhere from a 20s to 40s male. All that humor is exactly right up that alley, uh, especially with Dave Bautista's build. And he keeps uh, Stuber, uh, Kumail as Stuber keeps making jokes about Terminator and looking for Sarah Connor. And like, it's to me, that's hilarious because they're well paced and they're well written and well put in there. But I can see people not liking this, but I personally thought Stuber was hilarious. I didn't stop laughing for a long time in Stuber. Uh, Chris, how, what was your take on Stuber? Uh, I, I thought Stuber was, was fine. I, that, those kinds of movies don't like comedies don't usually like connect with me. So I remember when we saw that I was kind of lukewarm on it, you know, in all regards. So that, that's, that's kind of where I am on it. Still. Fair enough. I, I have a soft spot for Kumail and Johnny. I think, I think he's hilarious. I think he's, I think brilliant. I, I think he's, I think he's very good. Yes. I just don't think the movie was great. Okay. Fair enough. But that's, I think better than a lot of comedies is Stuber. Um, also behind enemy lines by director, John Moore, Gene Hackman, Owen Wilson, Gabriel Macht, whom I met in 2017 uh, in Chicago. He's actually a pretty chill dude. And David Keith, 2001. The reason I like Behind Enemy Lines is because it's it's Owen Wilson before he was you know part of the comedy scene all the time, Owen Wilson. It's a different take on him. It's a true story, although I don't know. I mean, it's based on true events. I don't know how far the artistic liberties you know bar was bent for that. But yeah, um, yeah. It, it's a, it's a, it's about a, a a pilot who goes off mission because he's you know they just want to test out a new camera they're flying, and they get shot down by Serbian forces, and um, they are it's Owen Wilson's. He he has to survive and make it back to to get rescued by the the U.S. Navy. And it's, it's it's his story of the, the the journey he goes through, but I think it's a it's a it's a very good, well written, well paced movie that I whenever I watch, I'm always impressed by it. Especially, I'm always impressed by Owen Wilson's ability to. I mean, I always sometimes I forget that he was Owen Wilson before he was comedy Owen Wilson. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's um that's one that I return to again and again. I think a lot of people would appreciate a rewatch of that. And Chris, you chose an absolute classic, The Nightmare Before Christmas, with Chris Sanderson as Jack Skellington, Catherine O'Hara as Sally, William Hickey as Dr. Finkelstein, Paul Rubens as Locke, Glenn Shaddix as Mayor, to name a few. Talk about this one for a second. The best part about this movie, the best thing about it, I guess I should say, is the fact that you can watch it during Halloween, you can watch it during Christmas, again, because it's great, why wouldn't you? And because you can see the Thanksgiving door at one point, you could watch it in Thanksgiving too, and you wouldn't be watching it out of season. This movie is great no matter what month you watch it in. It's, I don't know, it, it, it's a classic. I can't say much that hasn't already been said about this movie, but it's just, it, it, it it's one of the two movies that really put Tim Burton on the map, and while he hasn't come out with, you know, the most, the best versions of, you know, retelling some stories like, like uh, Willy Wonka and such, which I think the one that's coming out soon looks way better than what, you know, he did. I don't know. The movie, it just, it tickles that nice spot where it's got, you know, fun songs. It's, it's a good family film. It's short, which is fantastic for, you know, for when you're trying to watch, you know, a movie with like, you know, a family of three, four or whatever. I don't know. The movie just, you know, it gives me all the warm and fuzzies. It's, it's a great time of year for it. And it is fun to watch. So, well, if you also, remember, I mean, go ahead. I was just going to say, and you know, who, who knew that some of the actors in this could sing. So. Of it's course, good. of course, they're very talented, all of them. But also, it's <clears throat> um, Danny Elfman did the music, and Danny Elfman in the eighties and nineties, mm-hmm. he was just he did everything. Danny, it was all Danny. It was the Danny Elfman show, pretty much. Uh, <laughs> most, most features, and Tim Burton didn't make this; he wrote it um, and produced. Oh, that's it. right, he, yeah, he didn't yeah. make it. Henry Selleck directed it, and it's all. I always, whenever you think of Nightmare Before Christmas, most people, ninety nine out of hundred, would give oh, Tim yeah. Burton the credit for directing that, but it's not. It's I always, I, I it just it blows my mind that that's like I, I, I mean, even I forget about some sometimes. I just forget. I mean, in, in all fairness, when you think of Night Before Christmas, you think of Tim Burton. You know you what do. I mean? Every, you, you don't, you, you, that's the first person you'll think of every time. It, and then then every everything else comes as an afterthought. Yes, sir. That's 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 the truth. And it's not a bad. I mean, look. I mean, he's probably he probably laughs when people say that because like oh, I didn't make it, but I'll take the credit for it. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> let's talk about some trailers um let's switch yeah. gears a little bit now let's talk about american fiction with with jeffrey wright skylar wright patrick fischler john ortiz Issa ray michael b jordan it's a feature i think this movie looks hilarious and i laughed I've, i i like out loud laughed when i watched this trailer i i actually did too i think this movie looks right up my alley i think this is gonna be a fun movie to watch 
you know, in all honesty, I think it's going to be funny. I think it's going to be witty and I need all of that in my life. So yeah, no, I think this was, this one might be good. I think that the really clever thing the trailer does to get that really f- guttural first laugh is they, it's kind of like a serious tone up until Issa Rae is a guest, is a, is a talk, is a guest on a talk show. And she's like, why don't you read an excerpt of the book? And she reads the excerpt and it's like, you know, what I'm talking about, but it's, yeah, hel- yeah, it's hilarious. And the way they talk about, um, what they're trying to do with, um, with that, what they're trying to do with that is like the do rag and Michael B. Jordan, and and is then like, mm-hmm. oh, we're gonna try to get it out for Juneteenth. It's to me like, it's yeah, just, the comedy hits hits all the points. I hope it does. I really hope it's mm-hmm. a clever, it's it, it's it's a clever written movie that, um, is will be will be funny in its in its own way. You know, that's just mm-hmm. what I hope. But otherwise, I mean, Jeffrey Wright is awesome. I have no oh, problem. Hundred yeah, percent. I like, of course, Michael B. Jordan, Issa Rae, both fantastic as 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 well. So, and John Ortiz, like, love to see him. So, this is going to be a definite watch for me. Now, whether that's on streaming or theatrical, that's a different story. But uh, any last thoughts about American fiction? Well, you did mention, you know, if it's going to be theatrical or if it's going to be streaming. This feels like a streaming film. I don't, I, for some reason, I don't see this coming out in theaters. But I mean, you know, we'll have to see. But it definitely has that vibe. It might be. Hold on. I, it, it might be Netflix. They have their hands in a it lot could of be. things lately. But hold on. It is. I can't. The, I can't. I'm looking at it now. It's nope. It's. I don't. I, I think it's. I think it's a theatrical release. So. All right. And Good Family Switch, which is Netflix, I think, is Jennifer Garner and Ed Helms, uh, has <laughs> has the mother and father switching places with the son and the daughter, which is has weird implications all to itself. But. Uh, mm-hmm. I like Jennifer Garner, man. She is right at home in a movie like this. She just brings that wholesome mother vibe to every role she's in. I mean, look, 13 going on 30, mega successful movie. Um, a large part of that is in is in is due to Jennifer Garner being Jennifer Garner in that movie. She's just she brings this weird wholesome vibe to everything she does. Even even that what was what was that movie that wasn't very good. I don't Chris, I don't know if you're doing it yet with this um where she was getting revenge for the death of her husband and son. It, um, oh, yeah. I don't, I, peppermint. I don't know what that is. Yeah, Peppermint. I don't know if you, <gasps> even that in like that weird, she still, she did, she did bring that kind of weird, wholesome vibe to that, even though she was murdering people. So it was. Hmm. Um, murdering it's worth, people. It's worth a watch. It's you not know, very good, but it's, it's worth a watch. As you do. As, yeah, as you do. Uh, this is a revenge movie, though, but I, I'm looking forward to Family Switch. Uh, I like. I that. am not <laughs> really like not at all. Really, no. Oh. I I I don't like the whole you know thirty go thirteen going on thirty you know Freaky Friday mo- movie thing. I don't like that shtick. I think it's I don't know. I don't like it. I mean, they're in the whole family. The dog stuff looks funny, but I don't know. They even poke fun at like the fact that the thir- like they poke fun at uh, the whole shtick within the tra- the trailer, don't they? They talk about how, man, I just feel freaky. And then someone's like, I'm 13 going on 30. It, I don't know. That whole time. Of course. And Jennifer, Jen- I mean, of, of course, but that's the thing is those are the same movies in the genre of, I mean, I, I, I get it, but I don't know. <laughs> no, I mean, it's, like, I get it's it. just, it's, it's just meta. I mean, we're, we're, we're about to talk about a movie for an hour. That's all meta. So, I mean, okay. Yeah. True. True. I mean, that's, that's fine, but I, I, I'm looking forward. It's a, it's a Netflix on November 30th. So I will definitely make sure that we watch and talk about that for this show. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, good. Good. I can't <laughs> wait. Good. Um, and let's talk about the fall guy with Ryan Gosling, Emily Blunt, Teresa Palmer, Aaron Taylor, Johnson, Lee majors, Winston Duke, Adam Dunn. It's a feature. It seems Listen. like I'm more excited about this than you are. Listen, I think you need to get off Ryan Gosling's cock is what it is. I refuse just... to do that, sir. I will not. <laughs> I mean, just uh, the the amount that you've already hyped this up, and we've only seen one, we've only seen a tra- like a trailer, and I don't know, like I don't see if this is going to be a good time or not. I know you and Roger are all in on this thing. It looks fine. I'm sure the movie's going to be funny. It's going to be okay. I just I don't know the whole spy trope, the you know the was it the unlikely spy kind of thing. I don't know, man. It, it it is what it is. We'll we'll see if it's funny. If it's funny, I, it'll be great. If it's not funny, it won't be. That's the thing. Like I just, I don't I don't I just think it's um. I, I just think it's Ryan Gosling who brings the who I mean the whole movie exists I think because of him I don't I mean he has this kind of raw I don't I don't want to use words that everyone uses with him but like he's he's kind of a quiet persona mm-hmm. on on like a the tough guy on scene that he kind of brings but he knows that he's always yeah. known that I mean it's 
even with the 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 nice guys with Russ him and Russell Crowe, he had that played that same character of he's funny, very well comedic time, but he doesn't say a lot. He's kind of like the silent but hilarious type of type of hero. But it's I think he's gonna do that here too. And it's this this has vibes of um what was that movie with Sandra Bullock and Channing Tatum? Remember that movie we talked about? Sandra Bullock and Channing Tatum. And, I, I remember those two being in a film. I don't remember what it is, though. Uh, Brad Pitt was in it for like a few minutes because his hair was flowing in the wind. You remember like, they talked about his Oh, hair God, yeah. Yeah. That yeah. Has, that has, <laughs> I can't remember what that movie's called, but it has those vibes as well. Um, yeah. It's just like, you know, that. But I, I hope. It, but the character seemed to be reversed. Um, the the blunt character and the uh, and the other character seemed to be reversed of the characters mm-hmm. in that movie. But um, I'm excited about that. Uh, but it's there, we've we've seen this movie. We've seen you know Family Plan and we've seen the Fall Guy. We've seen these movies a hundred times a piece. It's just the the shtick within the movie is the new parameters of the movie. You know, it's just we've seen each of these movies yeah. before. We've seen almost every movie before. But I, I am very excited for this one as well. I just I just want it to be March already. Thank you, Ryan Gosling. Yep. You're amazing wherever you are. <sighs> I know. After Barbie, I was like, "That's it." <laughs> Ryan Ryan Gosling's the best. He's the best. He's the best. All right, yep. Chris. It is that time, my friend. Let's talk it about is. an interesting movie: Five Nights at Freddy's. Now, FNAF. What? Oh, I just said FNAF. Like a, you know, it's fine. Okay. Ignore me. Fair enough. Thirty uh, percent on the tomato meter and an audience score of eighty-eight percent. What do you think about that? Wait, hold on. 88% in what? What was the critic score? The critic score was 30. Audience score is 88. All of those critics are sellouts and bastards. They're wrong. They've been paid to bomb this movie, this masterpiece of filmmaking, this wonderful rendition of a fantastic piece of media lore. They have been bought by the corporate media. Uh, I don't my, agree. With, that's my stance. I, on I don't it. agree with any of that. Um, any of it? No, no. I, I don't you think, too. You, I don't you've think, been you've been bought and paid for too. I don't think it's. I I think thirty is where it sits. Yeah. I. I, I was not, <laughs> oh man. I was not happy with this movie because it ultimately I don't think it makes any sense. But two hundred plus million dollars would like to argue with you. Well, I mean, a movie can be popular but still be bad. I mean, look at the last five Terminator movies. They all made money. They're just bad. <laughs> but I mean, it's. The movie can be good, but or can be popular, but still be awful. I mean, look at you know, I don't Fast, know. Fast and Furious, all those movies. Now anyway, it feels like you're projecting. Fair enough. All right, let's look at the Metacritic. <laughs> the Metacritic is a 33. Yikes. Okay, that's higher than 30, right? Three points higher. Sure. I'm just saying. I sounds mean, like there's some on, there's some honest reviewers over there. Three so. percent <laughs> more. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Three percent more. <laughs> <laughs> Josh Hutcherson, Elizabeth Leo, Piper. Rubio, Mary Stewart Masterson, Matthew Lillard, yes, 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 Lucas, yes, Lucas Grant, Kevin Foster, Jade Kinder Martin, Jess Weiss, and Roger Joseph Manning. Now, some of those are, are the voices of the of the the, mm-hmm. the Freddy the Freddy crew, uh, directed by Emma Tammy. And now, this is of course a story adapted by video game, uh, the video game universe. Chris, I'll, I'll give you five, or you can take a few minutes to talk about that if you want. You you have more experience with Five Nights at Freddy's than I do. I I, I know of it. I've never played it. So, oh, so I mean, Five Nights at Freddy's. It, uh, it's a very so this whole franchise started with a very simple game, and most I think all of them are made by one guy. And th- the first one when it came out, I mean, it's not it's not a great game in the sense of you know what was put together, but what really got everyone interested was the story behind it, the lore of the characters and the setting and what's happening is what made the game interesting and people like uh what what was his last name matthew what matthew lillard but matthew lillard uh has spoken highly of it in the past but then you actually have a you have a you have a cameo in here of someone who put a lot of time as a youtube creator making uh theory videos on it and trying to like dig into the lore and he's actually featured in this film in a cameo because of how much he did like what he did for the game Wait, and who, that community. Who, who, who was that the waiter in the uh, the diner. Oh, okay, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Fair so, enough. so he, so his name is. His, I mean, he he goes by Matt Pat, and he does he does game theory and film theory, um, which he talks about like theories behind like video games and different things and like in them and movies and stuff now, and um, he his whole tagline is that you know it's just a theory, and he says that to that table of uh of our bad guys as they're talking and stuff. So, but yeah, so anyway, the lore for the game is what really blew up because within the game's playable universes, the creator of the game 
put hints and clues to what was happening and why it was happening. A lot of times you, when you get a ghost story, because that's essentially what this is, right? And a lot of times in a ghost story, you get like the why or the what or the how at the very end, and it's shown to you, and it's always kind of like a cliche thing that's going on. While this game's lore doesn't escape the cliche stuff, it uh, the game didn't give you that information outright. You had to really dig in, find clues to really have a guess, a very educated guess on what happened to like to the you know to the characters within the gaming verse and what your character is going through. And that really got people interested And every game that came out after the first one had more and more of the story built onto it. You know why things are happening the way they were and kind of expanded on that. You know, I think I know what's going on feeling instead of, instead of the movie telling you or the game telling you what's going on. And it got a lot of people interested and it blew up. It got really huge for a little while there. We, uh, we've talked about how we think this movie is probably a couple years too late at this point to really, you know, have all of the momentum that it needed to make as much money as it could. However, it's not doing bad already. So, I mean, whether it's a, a 33 on Metacritic or not, this movie's making bank. So good, for, you know, good for it and the people behind it. I agree. It's uh, doing quite well for itself. And I'm surprised actually how well it's doing, to be honest, for itself. But it's mm-hmm. after watching the movie, I, I understand where the allure is that the money is coming from. I really get that because it's even though I wasn't really high on the quality bar, I can see why as an adaption, why people would like this, because I still think it's one of the better movie th- or video game movie adaptions that we've that we've had, period. As far as I mean, in, as far as spirit of the it, game to screen, I think it's 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 faithful enough. I mean, so so I'll talk about one of the positives I have for the movie right now. I guess is that one of the big positives in in, in the column for me is the fact that they stuck very close to the game's lore, like like very close. There's only there's not too many things that are changed around, and too, there's not too many characters added to make you know the story move forward. The um. In the original game, all you all you are is is the night is the security night guard. Like that, that's all you are, and you experience the whole game through like these monitors and you know the rooms that you visit. So, and it's all in first person. This so beyond that, everything else you see is 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 added f- to make the movie happen. But all of the characters and who's involved and what's going on, it's all very close. And to that, I can give big kudos because it's very easy to make a movie called Resident Evil. And have some, you know, have one umbrella corporation, and that be the only thing that ties you to what that, that game's history is or that game's lore. This did not do that. It it, it went all the way in, which I uh, I would assume the creator of the game had a hand in that in some way, shape, or form. Well, that's good. I mean, I I, I imagine so too, especially when it looked mm-hmm. to be pretty faithful. Again, I've not experienced it, but I I know of Five Nights at Freddy's through like video game culture and the environment. But I I think. I was pretty happy with the adaption. I wasn't really happy with the quality, but it's hard to a movie like this. It's really tough to, I think, have it make sense all the time. Yeah, yeah. it's not. It and the game didn't have to deal with any of the making sense of, uh, of it part. But let's let's just let's jump into it then. And so, um, first first thoughts of this. What I was actually very kind of I was I was kind of high on this for a while. I was really kind of digging it. Um, okay. Again, I had a kind of mixed reaction, but. Um, if, if I'm looking at this from a film criticism point of view, it's not great. But if I'm looking at this from the enjoyment factor and um, enjoyment factor, what I've just seen and something I know of that exists in the video game space, it's like Mario. I, th- I, th- I think it fares quite a bit better when you don't look at it through a, a critical analysis lens. I really do think it fares yeah. better. Oh, I mean, so it's this movie's not good, right? We, we can agree on that. Like this movie is not a well-made good film for like the art of movies. And I think that's a very fair thing that, you know, if anyone said that I would agree with them. However, the movie itself, like you said, it, it has this weird entertainment value to it as you're going through. And if, especially if you're interested in this at all, like where this comes from, you're going to, you're going to enjoy yourself in it because of what it's tied to, but it, it's not a good movie, but it is a, it can be a fun ride. If you just kind of let it happen is I think my, the best way I can say it. I, I agree with that, and it's, it's one of those weird movies that just falls between the cracks, just like that. Is mm-hmm. I yep. can see why people are enjoying it that are pretty high on the game. I can see that, but I can also see why I can also see the thirty percent. I, I mean, I get why, but I mean, I also it just let's start with Josh Hutcherson for for one second. I yeah, want to yeah. say about him is 
Josh Hutcherson has been acting since he was extremely young, and he's been in some great movies, and he's given some great performances himself. To me, the the material here seems a little beneath him. However, I would, if I had to bet money, I would, if I was a betting man, I would say that he he was one of the. I'm guessing sure he's he's one of the pool of young male leads who really wanted this because they really enjoy the game. You know, that's very possible. And and again, prob- maybe you know at least the um. Like the uh, again, he may have enjoyed the lore behind the game as people were like enjoying that ten years ago or eight, nine years ago, whatever it is. But like, it, I too wondered what he was doing in this movie. I, I, I can't imagine he's not that hard up for cash. So he must really, you know, be behind the the actual like the game itself or the you know the history of what it is. Well, the thing is, Josh Hutcherson again. He's been in some huge, even from a young age, he's been in some huge movies. So I mean, he's mm-hmm. not he's not a bad actor by any means. And he's sought after because he is, he is often, um, if I remember reading this a long time ago in a, in a, when I was at Carmike in a movie magazine that we get like box office weekly or box office monthly is he was one of the young actors that like studios actively pursued all the time. And they wrote characters with him in mind. So that's how really? good okay. they thought he was. And um, just for, so he goes back all the way. I don't want to say all the way. Cause it's like, he, he, he's not that old, but I mean, he goes, back to, <laughs> he goes back to ER in 2002, but then not too far after that, uh, he's in American Splendor in 2003, um, and then he's in the next notable thing, I think. Um, let's look at it. It's, um, oh, Justice League Unlimited. That's a, it's a TV series. You may know about that one. I don't, I didn't watch mm-hmm, that, but yeah. I know. And Oh, Howl's Moving Castle. He was a voice in 2004. Um, again, he was Polar He was Polar Express, and then he was in kick, Kicking and Screaming, and then um Zathura, which I think is an amazing movie. RV, Bridge to Terabithia, Firehouse Dog. Now some of these are they exist because they're meant to be kids drawn the kid audience, but a Journey yeah. to the Center of the Earth. Um and then it just goes on from there. And I think he was in, wasn't he? In, oh yeah, Hunger Games. Yep. Red Dawn. So I mean he's been in some big stuff and he's been in some good stuff mm-hmm. as well. Um yeah. in dubious in dubious battles, some more of the Hunger Games. Um, the rusted, which was a shore I'm looking at. Oh, the disaster artist, which is loved. Um, yeah. So there's he. It's interesting to see the the roles he didn't get or turned down to. I remember reading how that was interesting as well. But hmm. he's not someone that would be like hard up for a role. So okay, yeah, I got you. Well, like and and uh, not to go away from him, but I want to finish this thought about we talked about like the the popularity of the game, and just from I think from this blurb here I, that I found. Just on Matt Pat's Game Theory channel alone, his first five videos that he ever made nine years ago for Five Nights at Freddy's have a one have have ninety nine million views between, over, uh, of five videos. Jeez, Louise. he he has he has sixty five videos on Friday Nights at Freddy's alone, mm-hmm. and that's all over the course of nine years. So the thing, you know, it, it has a, it has a huge fan base. But I mean, to go back to Josh, I I, I think from his performance in this, he doesn't do a bad job at all. I think he's fine. I think he's actually probably the most believable character in the movie for like, you know what he's going through and what's going on and why he's there. Everyone else just seems kind of forced or kind of stuck there or kind of tropey in a way. So I think his character's done very well, whether that's the, the writing, the directing or the acting it's who's to say, well, but he I does mean, a fine job. I think, I think, <sighs> I think you're right, and I, w- I would say the other one I think is real is probably Matthew Lillard. But even he acts, his character acts weird. But like it's it's a it's for a purpose, obviously. But it's yeah, also, it's, yeah. Now I want to talk about something later towards the end, and, and I'll give a spoiler before I I'll give like a a warning before I say it though. Of like, there's one line of dialogue that just completely breaks the movie for me because it's tied to matthew lillard and scream in 1996 that as soon as it said i know exactly how the movie's gonna play i knew everything to a t when this line of dialogue was said nothing was a mystery to me anymore because everyone it was it was a very strange kind of like i didn't understand because let's talk about the matthew lillard character then early in the early in the film hutcherson's character has gone through some pretty horrendous things in his life his brother was kidnapped um his parents are no longer with him it's fallen on him to take care of his little sister. Like if any, like he's got like one of the worst lives for someone his age <laughs> ever. Yeah. And he's just, he needs, he needs a job. He needs work. So he goes to visit someone. He sees someone to help him with a job. And Matthew Lillard's character is super awkward. And you are like, you know that 
it has to be for a reason. Frank's, for instance, I mean, you shouldn't forget when you're watching the movie when when he sees this guy's name when he when Matthew Lillard finally sees his name on the uh, on the file that's given to him by the judge, he starts acting differently. So the question to you is, the question to me was. Since, since again, I'd never experienced this. Was is his last name Fazbear or <laughs> Fazbear, <laughs> or is it, or is it for another reason? Or you know what I mean? Yeah, but like, finally, yeah, yeah. because it's in this in this world, they this place, this this the Freddy Fazbear's. Is, well, I mean, I mean, I'm assuming it's supposed to be like a riff on Chuck E. Cheese. It is. It is. Okay, I, I assume that. So I assume that in this in this universe, like people are afraid of this place because all these kids went missing and no one could find them, and then it mm-hmm. shut down. With for some reason the machine's still full of quarters, by the way. Um yeah, but it's so you realize that either has to be they're withholding the information from us for a reason, and then once you figure out what I mean, you can narrow it down pretty pretty quick, but it's the line of dialogue that ruined it for me. But yeah, that's Matthew Lillard is wasted in his movement. But again, I think he's one of the ones that I think wanted to be in it because he's probably a big gamer nerd, just like you know, a lot of people in Hollywood are like um Who's the oh, he is. Warhammer 40k guy? Um, Superman. Who, oh, who is it? Ca- Cavill. Cavill. Henry, Henry Cavill. Like another. Like he's a he's a gamer man, and he likes to get behind those projects that are adapting video games. And Matthew Lillard, I would I would bet again dollars to donuts. I would bet that he is. he's a huge gamer. No, he is. He he he's been on he's been on a D and D podcast and things like that before. Mm. That's yeah, so he that's absolutely cool. is. Yeah. Well, good. He, uh, I, I, I like when guys like him are involved in stuff like this. Yeah. Then. Yeah, well, and, and uh, you say that he's wasted in this. I, I don't know. I don't know if I agree with that, just because a the movie's being successful, so there's that. But like, I don't know. He comes in at the end of this and kills it. I think. Okay, you know, okay I, fair, I, fair. I, I, I yeah. Okay, in in that respect, you're right. It's, it's yeah, that, I, and I I haven't seen him that I haven't seen him this animated since he was in that uh, he was in a movie where he's like uh, I don't know he's 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 like, he's like a guy's guy talking about love. I can't remember what what movie that's in, but I, I remember him in that specifically. And he gives like a great like monologue about you know about like, his thoughts on love and things. But anyway, I haven't seen him that animated or like you know kill it with like a speech since then. And I think he I think he's utilized very well in this. I think he kills it. Well, not I don't think he's utilizing it well in the beginning, but he and, and the, when he comes when he comes back in the film, then yes, I, I mm-hmm. think you're probably right. But again, he's he acts so weird that it's almost it's a you should be thinking about that conversation the entire movie because like why was that so weird why yeah was i got so you. i mean, odd? I mean it, it's one of those things where like you know you, you can pick on it if you're looking you pick you can pick up on it if you're looking for it some people might not might not be and you know they might just watch the whole thing through and then go oh okay and then when they watch it for free on peacock they can rewind to that scene and go that's why you know what i mean yeah, sure, so the, sure. The, the, there's a lot of things you could do to you know to make it make sense but i don't know some people will catch it some people won't and then i don't i think either way if you do or you don't i don't think it ruins any experience because you know everything else in the movie between that point and the end point of the movie is pretty bad so like you're not gonna be you're not gonna lose sleep over knowing like you know anything from that scene anyway i don't think well, I mean, again, the 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 vital piece of information you get from that scene is he knows who Hudson's character is, but mm-hmm. Hudson doesn't know yep. that he knows why that's important. Yeah. So that's the key yeah. scene. That's a key piece of information. Uh, but so the, the the plot is very similar to the game. The plot, the, the game is you're a security, you're watching cameras, and the whole point is they pop up quick and scare you. Yeah. That's that's the point of the game, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, so like the point of that's what happens in the game. The point of the game is you're supposed to find out why you know why oh, okay, yeah, okay. Bears Pizza is haunted. Poor, poor, poorly choice worded uh, on my part, but yeah. So that's part of the. I think that's what why the, the experience. Game kind of like, yeah. I think that's why the experience of the game kind of exploded is because like it was just fun to be scared for because oh, it, yeah. it happens so quick you really can't prepare for it. So mm-hmm, yeah, that's mm-hmm. the whole thing there, and it's they've somehow at least I, I'm gonna give the the I'm gonna give the um. The credit here to the director of, uh, I think it's Emma Tammy. Yeah, she did a good job in, I think, realizing this, or realizing at least Freddy Fazbear's, the the like the the Chuck E. Cheese kind of restaurant. Mm-hmm. I think it's an okay realized place, and I think it's very faithful to the source material as, as well. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Oh, it's like it's even got it's even got the back room, which you know that didn't come in until later. It's got a lot of stuff going on that it, it does pay a lot of homage, and I think you're right. It, it, 
I don't know. If you turn all the lights on in there and clean up the place, I'd feel like I was in Chuck E. Cheese. You know what I mean? It's it's the same thing. <laughs> it it is. I mean, that's the same thing. There's a ball pit in one corner. There's some games in, in another corner, and then along one wall, there's a whole bunch of, of of arcade and pinball stuff. Yeah, that sounds about right. Hundred percent. And some yeah. weird, creepy stage that that no one wants to be on that, that that you know you have to get onto if it's your birthday. Yeah, no. Yeah, it, it makes a lot of sense. And it, and it's I'm I'm glad they kept the creatively at least the the whole security guard like that's that's how they brought Hutcherson in. That that's. That's how we experience the movie is they bring the Hutchison character mm-hmm. in for us to experience vicariously through um, as a security guard because he's I mean, th- again, it's one of those things like there's a lot of weird shit that happens in the first night yeah. or two that again has that horror movie trope is, oh, no, I definitely just saw something, but I'm not going to go investigate it. I, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, that's yeah. exactly it. And it's and true to form. It, it is five nights at Freddy. Like when, when yep. everything when everything goes down, it's on the fifth night. And I appreciate yep. that because the first two nights go by pretty, 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 pretty quick, pretty, I mean, outside some weird stuff, pretty uneventfully. But like, you know, kind of the ground rule, the, it, the first two nights up, the ground rules of the world. And um, I, one character that I really thought was I was really kind of annoyed by it was the cop. Vanessa. Yeah. So 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 here here's here's a piece of information for you. Vanessa is the is one of the only things that is like hard change from the lore. So that's like a big like thing they they worked in to kind of make it all come together, I think. I think they needed a second character that was that was that had some stakes involved in some way to make the end was able to info dump and so that our night guard isn't like reading like off of pieces of paper he finds in Freddy Fazbear's, you know what I mean, like news articles or, you know, employee files. So that's how you discover stuff in the game. So I think her character was kind of pushed in the way it is to to literally be the vessel for information to to give you the info dump and you know to to keep you interested in some way shape or form well and, and like from that point of view how and and no knowing knowing that again not having any experience with the game i'm I'm glad you said that because like that's a great way to to give you that information rather than have him find it like in a yeah. game you have to do it like in resident evil you find like journals exactly, and notes yeah. scattered about well, like you deliver that and you find a way different ways to deliver that information and adaption but now that you said that i'm glad they chose to do it that way because that that makes a whole lot more sense to do it that way instead of him like oh why is this piece yeah. of paper here that i should read you know yeah. what i mean like yeah totally. it, it, it makes more sense than you know us us hearing him read out loud employee files you know what i mean <laughs> yeah it makes way more sense from that perspective yeah. it still isn't great you know, her character is still weirdly placed and her loyalties are all over the place. And like, I don't know, it, it's there's a lot of questions there and things that don't really work unless you like just close your eyes and pretend like it's not real. Well, like, I so mean, all that's talk, wrong. Let's but, talk about like her shift. What is her shift? Can we talk about like she got the, first she's all night, she got and, the night and, shift. Well, the, I mean, and then, and, and then she's on on shift during the day when she sits with him by the river and then she's back on. The, like what? I I honestly I thought mean, she wasn't real. I honest to God thought she I did real. too. I did too. I thought I was like this is going to be really stupid when she isn't real because I know two characters from outside of like our main cast see the cop car and see the cop. So she can't be a vision for everybody. You know what I mean? But no, she ends right. up being real, just you know, being poorly written. So yeah, like, horrible. <laughs> and, I, and one thing I hate it, and I hate it, and. Movies in the late '90s did this, and early 2000s, and you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Is uh-huh. is when they the the characters infuriatingly so to the audience watching it is like, oh, but this happened, but I can't tell you why or even who. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like just fucking say it, man. Like, yep. I hate when they do that. I cannot stand it when she's like, even Hutcherson's character. I forget his what, what's his name. Hutcherson's character. He, I don't remember. Yeah. No, he he oh, says my. he says. Yeah, he says, "Tell me who it is." Yeah, he's like, <laughs> "Just tell me what you're trying to say." And I'm like, yeah, "Thank yeah. you." And then she does Just say it. I definitely yeah, thought she was fake. I, up until the I last too, twenty first. minutes, I thought she was completely fake. But yep, it's an interesting way to do that. But um, and let's talk about other things. Like, I I really appreciate the whole. Even though a lot of people, I thought I don't think will like this part of the film. Is I like the the kids in the woods and how they tied it with his brother's abduction. Yeah. I really is is that is that also that also play true to the game that so that specific like being in the dream and being in the woods no but the um the ghosts wanting more friends yes okay well that's well I mean let's we'll, we'll not go further than that as far as that's concerned but I like how they chose to do the thing in the woods although it took a weird turn when the ghosts turn out to be 
really kind of like, no, no, we don't care. We're gonna we're gonna take everyone any, anyway. Yeah. No, so 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 here, to, so here's a you expect them to do a one eighty and be like, oh, we're sorry, yeah. you know. Yeah. No. So here's the thing about the woods part they don't like at the like the last time we see all everybody in the woods, like the ghosts kind of turn on him, but Vanessa info dumps on us very accurately that uh that he has an influence over the over them and it doesn't make sense because in his dream uh the big bad guy can't be having an influence over them right so it just doesn't it just doesn't make any sense for it to play out that way even in like a dream sequence kind of thing because the kids aren't evil unless like you know they're being they're being puppeteered by the mastermind involved it, so, it's just it, it, so there's things like that that are like you know eye rolly about this film hard. and so what's the so, so one of the cool like lore thing of the is the missing kids are actually in in the robots in the the mm-hmm. body suits right that's the whole thing mm-hmm. and yeah but bodies disintegrate like no sorry, but like bodies decay bodies eventually won't oh, yeah. be there anymore so so are I they mean, stuck bones will. in okay fine bones will but that's so that was one of the things I was I was hoping to get some clarification with you. Now, the opening scene with the security guard before before Hutcherson's mic comes in, what yeah. happens? That security guard gets a thing, and then what happens to his body? You saw him in the back office room, laying uh, laying there. Uh, he was strewn about all the other corpses with Golden Freddy. Okay, because there's the one on the floor, which people keep saying was him, but like, no, that was the one that the that no, was, no 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 yeah yeah that, that was that, the, that, the, the, the cupcake nod on. Yeah, that cupcake eight. Yeah, so yeah, no, but uh, he's actually you can see his you can see his uniform at one point. Like you can see like his body covered by bags, and his he's he's in, he's in his security guard uniform. He's just buried. Okay, so that makes a whole lot more sense. But what's the point of so the point of putting the 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 helmet on, like the point of doing that visually for us to see with the with the blade spinning, is yeah. so they just become one with the machine. So it's 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 a little bit less complicated than that. The um, uh, so they want people to so Golden Freddy, which we only see him that one time because it's not the same as the Golden Bunny. Um, Golden Freddy has like his is it has his own thing where he's like he he needs someone to like to be in his suit and no one fits. So like he's like just trying to take people and grind them into pieces and kill them inside the suit so that he can have he can be like a suit puppet thing too. So it, it, it's odd. It, it it's it's a little bit. Out. It's never really explained, and that's why I don't think we see Golden Freddy again besides in the back room kind of thing. Yeah, I thought that it's was not strange. the same as it's was, not the same as the Golden Bunny. I thought that was very strange how they didn't make the correlation well. Um, I, again, it's uh, this movie's weird how it plays out with the. Uh, because you really kind of have to believe in that kind of stuff, if that makes sense, yeah, to really, true. to really buy into the whole, um, the ghosts and the suits and mm-hmm. what's actually going on behind the scenes, and you really kind of have to buy into it. Now, so let's uh, let's talk about one of the one of the key elements here is the daughter mm-hmm. for one second. Okay, yeah. Hold on, hold on. I want to talk about something involving the daughter first. Okay. What's her name? Aunt Janet or Aunt Jane? I can't remember. The aunt. Oh, uh, J- Aunt Jane. Aunt Jane. Let's talk about how bad Aunt Jane's plan is to essentially, uh, you know, get this, get custody of this daughter oh, it's and what her it's goal awful. is. It's her awful. her goal is to get custody of her niece so that she can get the 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 money per month from the government, like a check for her. Which that check you get is not very much. It's a terrible plan to make money. That woman's dumb. That whole plot part of it is dumb, but I, it's only there to have a give our you know Josh Josh's character a drive to have a job and be in good standing. Blah 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 blah. So all that happens, you know, multiple things happen around that character and around that plot that are just ridiculously dumb, right? But that leads me into the niece, who I think her character is kind of tropey as well, but. I don't mind the way they utilize that trope to kind of, you know, push the story forward more and to to show a good lesson about what Josh's character learns where like, you know, living in the past is what's actually making his whole life, you know, to where it is, where he needs to focus on the now and the future. So I think that was actually a good message that came from all that. Well, yes and no. I mean, it's but again, it all it all ties in with the cop as well, which is 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 clumsy, clumsily done. 
Um, it's not, you know, it's just, it's weird how it's, how it's, that's, that's part of it's done too. Um, because like yeah. she, the cop definitely knows some of what is going on with that. Like she definitely knows. Well, she knows all of it. it yeah. That's the, the thing, like, that's why it's so weird. Like, I don't know why as, I don't know why certain characters would let other characters exist without making sure they were tight lipped about everything. And I don't want to spoil it, but it's very strange how that all kind of, again, you have to like really buy into the premise to, to like buy into that to to be okay with that whole that whole like arc playing out you really have to buy into the premise to be okay with that but also buying into the premises again i think what 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 helps when talking about some some of the more technical aspects of the thing i i liked like for instance the red eyes with the i mean that that, that's that's pretty true to form with the game right that that's a thing yeah yep okay absolutely Mm. and i like um when when we see was it would you call him golden freddy yeah, in, in the friend. end, like his eyes are. It's actually pretty terrifying. All the all the, th- oh, all the yeah. things in their eyes are pretty fucking terrifying. If you yeah uh, think about it in like a I dimmer thought, setting, yeah. Mm-hmm. I thought the effect from the golden bunnies like eyes was actually really good too. I thought like it was it made it stand out as a little bit different, and you know for good reason. But like even that was really creepy. Like the way that his eyes lit up white instead of you know any other color, and I thought it worked really well. But I, the, I think the the effects of all the animatronics I thought were really good because it's really good to get something like that bad. The only one that's bad is a cupcake, right? The cupcake is almost comical, but at the same time, the cupcake's supposed again, to be comical. I think. Yeah, 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 exactly. And like, I think that you know this, like, you, you like, if you're watching this movie, you have to be bought into it, right? You're gonna hate this movie if you have no idea why you're there watching it, one thousand percent. But to come from the 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 internet phenomenon that this thing was for a short time and how big it was in video game lore and the video game space this so five nights at freddy's literally is one of the games that gave way to like small super super small indie developers or or indie development studios to really like know they could explode like all they they knew they had to make one game that was low enough cost that people love the concept of and they could they could blow up and you know, be set for, you know, to make as many games as they want to. It, it's basically the Blumhouse version of, of a video game. You know, you make it super low budget, but you make it super good and you make it with a lot of heart and people will buy that thing and they will, you know, fund whatever you're going to do from now on. Like if you're not bought into that whole sphere and understand what you're watching, you're going to hate this movie. But if you are bought in, you're not going to hate cupcake and how bad it looks on screen and how comical it is that it sneaks down the hallway as it hops, which has to be, it has to weigh like 40 fucking pounds, right? You know, there's All no way this thing isn't to be horrendously heavy. Well, well, yeah, yeah. But like this cupcake, which is the, you know, about the size of like, your, of like, of like a human skull. There's no way this thing isn't just going clang, clang, clang as it hops down a hallway but yet it sneaks up on people right and it goes so like and it goes like super fast yeah, yeah oh yeah 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 so like you know and if you're not like if if you're not bought in this film you're gonna hate that but if you're bought in this film you're gonna be like uh that's really stupid but okay that's kind of funny you know what i mean because like it's all these things are playing out from that perspective of you already kind of have an idea and or you're or you know why you're there and that's what's fun about the film it's not it's not the it's not great. It's not the best thing ever. But goddamn, I'm glad I, I was able to see it because you know I was a part of that you know big craze of Five Nights at Freddy's thing that happened eight you know nine ten years ago. Like I, I was there for it, and it's kind of cool to see it come together and really play out for you know all of its fans to see. I think that's pretty neat. No, I I totally agree with you on on that one, and I I, I don't think th- this is a Blumhouse movie, so yep, the, it the is. The budget was only two hundred million, so they've they've already ten times that plus some. So I mean, twenty million, you mean, right? Twenty, 20 million. That's yeah, twenty million. It was yeah, the budget, so they've they've already yeah. you know times ten that. So I mean, when nice. this thing is done, it's probably going to be times twenty five or times thirty the budget. Listen, so Blum Mouse knows how to bet on a film, man. Like, <laughs> yeah, they crazy. certainly have that. They certainly have that down. But I mean, again, it's like one of those. I I, I think the best thing this movie has going for it is the set design for especially the the Freddy Fazbear's restaurant is really yep. cool. Kind of like that that weird eerie. Also, can I ask you? Let me, let me just ask you, like a, a real cool. If if you're yeah. a security guard and and you park in that parking lot and there's all these mm-hmm. mysteries behind this building, kids yeah. went missing. Would you allow yourself to fall asleep? Uh well, he's on sleeping pills, right? He has a sleeping issue. He sleeps a lot in this film, but um, I mean, me, 
I'm not going near that place. I got the heebie-jeebies, dog. Like, there's, it's just not going to happen. I'm not going to no, no, work no, there. No, 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 I, see, no. See, give me a bat. I'll take care of it. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you think you, think you Grayson Maxwell, is going to take care of it? You'd be, you, you wouldn't even die a cupcake. You would die because you fell out of the chair wrong. You like, know what I mean? Like, that's what's going to okay. happen there. This, is, this isn't, this is kind of like M3GAN where it's like, I get by the end of the movie why she was so devastating to fight against because we we saw examples. You couldn't punch her. It didn't do any damage. She, she, she's quick. She had a bunch of weapons. I get that. But these things, they're very slow and they don't have anything. I mean, that's it. If you can just stay only, feet away from them, you're fine. They're only slow until they don't want to be. Cause well, that's, like, again, cause... That's, again, that's like... That's like uh, world breaking because they, they who are you to say <laughs> what the paranormal uh, paranormal abilities of the foxy pirate is you know what i mean like how can you say that it can't just swoop up on somebody with its weird fucking patch and its captain hook claw and just fish hook somebody you're like, right you, I, you, I, don't get, you, don't, you don't you don't get to challenge that man i can't don't. I, 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 I can't <laughs> and, and you're right and it's i i definitely wanted especially with the cop who has weapons and like some kind of combat training and like what are those stick you you know what the, what those shocks or those beat sticks where you whoosh, it comes out to like a, yeah, you use yeah. It as a weapon like i mean a baton would, yeah yeah the baton she would have been a pretty <laughs> formidable force like, again it's one of those oh, yeah. things like and then th- speaking of that there's like a, a, f- a scene in the f- like right in the middle of the film where like everyone meets everybody <laughs> it's like that's super weird yeah. too super yeah. weird to me because like you can't that's like one of the major rules of film 101 is like you can't do that scene because it 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 just completely erases other scenes later down the road that are no longer well, because of that well no they they talk about how you know that they, they just want to be friends unless someone is like influencing them so like i could see it but like yeah no like the whole the whole you know we're the best of friends song that starts playing from the fox and the hound yeah i i don't buy that either but whatever it's again we're this is the movie we're getting. You know what I mean? This is the twenty million budget Blumhouse film we're getting. Well, that's the thing is, like, it, I keep it, saying, it but, like, is. I'm happy with Five Nights at Freddy's. I just don't think it's very good, but like, again, I'm happy with it, and I'm glad that people are really enjoying it because, like, we need more well realized video game adaptions, and this is one of them. That again, if you look at the reality, if you look at what could be, I would put this in the category of success for adaptions. Yep. Oh, I, I, I think I, I agree really on that, and the main reason why I agree with that is because of how how much they paid homage to the lore, like how close they kept to it as much as they could. And to make a sensible movie from it, I, I I'm all on board with the fact that this movie got made. I'm on board with the fact that and respect the fact that they stuck as close as they could to the lore the whole way through, I think, because otherwise, you know, you get some monstrosity, like, you know, with the resident evil films, which, you know, whatever that they're, they're just a video game name in name, not anywhere else. You know, we, we we didn't we didn't have to go suffer through that part of it, and you know who knows maybe maybe uh, Five Nights at Freddy's two, you know the return of Foxy Claw Hound Hound Man will be a shit take that's further and further away from the lore, and then we can bash on it. But right I now, think, I really don't I'm, think. I'm down. Wait, do you think we get a sequel? Yes. Do you really think we get a? Sequel? It made two hundred million dollars off of twenty. I I, I get that. But like, there are the, there 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 are five games, all with different stories added on. We haven't even seen Clowny. You know what I mean? Like, like there yeah, are there, there, okay, fair, fair, fair. There are so many characters in this in this universe that have these compelling backstories that people would, I guarantee, would love to see on screen. I would love. To, Golden Freddy has so much lore behind him, and so many theories that people would love to see that play out on screen. This, you know, out of this two hundred million plus dollars that the thing is make, assume assume three quarters of it are huge fans of this already. You know what I mean? It's yeah, people would come to see the second one when it's made. Hundred percent. But how do you? Where do you? Where do you go with it? Like we're back at Freddy Fazbear's because somehow it wasn't torn down, even though because many people there are, there are this. There are more. There's more than one location. That's the first piece. And, oh, okay. Uh, and don't forget the person who the reason why this building is still standing is because somebody was still paying the bills. That person, you know, is very much you know like you know like a part of this film universe. So the fact, you know, it's not going to be torn down. You know, there's no, there's no investigations currently for what's, you know, what's happened even in this movie. This, this location is still going to be present and with things going on and there's more than one location. Okay. So that makes a whole lot more sense too. And also yeah. a line of one of the, not the, not the line of dialogue for me, but one thing that 
is said is I always come back. He says, exactly. It, is that a reference to something? Is that a reference to maybe like replayability of the game, or is that a reference to something? What is that a reference to? Because that's a very carefully chosen just, line. Obviously, it's it's just a it's just a reference to William Afton and the like all the shitty things he did, and like it comes to play out in like the second and third uh, FNAF games. Mm. Okay, well, that, that makes so, yeah. more sense, too, though. And, I mean, as far as sequel's concerned, I don't know if we... I mean, where do you go with that? I just... That's a tough one, but, like, it, like, you, like you said, I mean, by the time this thing's over, it's going to make 250 or 300 million. Oh, yeah. Uh, easy, so it'd be foolish not to I'm, invest another 25 or 30 million you. into a sequel. In about six months or a year, you're going to see a a um, a teaser photo of 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 uh, Josh's Josh's character with his back turned to the camera holding an axe, the silhouette, and Five Night Nights at Freddy's restaurant in front of him, and it says, we're going back. I I, I guarantee it. <laughs> it's going to happen. Well, I mean, that's not a bad take. Also, I want to talk about, I don't know if you saw it, but you might be aware of it, Willy's Wonderland. Yeah. Um, I actually really enjoyed that movie with Nick Cage. It's basically Five Nights at Freddy's with, with, with Nick Cage. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It is. And it, there, there's that one really iconic piece of um, music. Um, Willy's what where it's like so what happens in Willy's Wonderland it's obviously a spin off of of this is um he's trying to get oh, I forget I I mean it's been maybe years since I've seen that when Nicolas Cage is yeah. the janitor who's trying to get a job at this place so he can get revenge on all of these on the 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 parallel of them for that film the parallel of the Freddy's for the Freddy 5 for that film yeah um, and so he can get revenge on that, but it's a it's a different take. Now, 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 did you did you watch that one? Yeah, and I'm not convinced that Nicolas Cage's character in that isn't just Big Daddy in disguise. I mean, Big Daddy as in Kick Ass. Oh, I mean, okay, sure, but I yeah. mean, I actually He's really kind of dug Willy's Wonderland, and I kind of yeah. that's a more adult version, I think, of Freddy's. Uh, five nights of freddy's i really think again it's the it's a it's a perfect example of why nothing like none of the pokemon clones will ever beat pokemon because i even though i think like willie's wonderland is a much better movie than five nights Freddy's, what doesn't have is the name five nights True. at freddy's which is yeah, iconically I the name of every of, like that's the, the that's the iconic name of this game you know so oh yeah but i want to say that that movie is i think worth a watch um it's really interesting. I, I know they made it really quick. Again, it's got some of those the same characters who like this. This character probably isn't her character is probably not really there. We're just seeing it, and then it's going to turn out to be mm-hmm. but nope. Turn out to be real. But it's again, <laughs> it's one of those things. It's it's a it's a fun watch. If you liked Five Nights at Freddy's, there's no reason why you wouldn't like Willy's Wonderland. It's the same thing. Gotcha. Um, yeah, that was right before he did Pig. Pig, pig, pig's a masterpiece. Pig is a masterpiece. Look, look, you and I, we should do a video. We should do an episode on Pig one one time. You could, I, man. I also it's think good. it's a masterpiece. Um, anyway, so let's get back to just a few more minutes on Freddy's. Is what is there, is there, is there some things that you really didn't like uh, about Freddy? No, I mean, I'm asking you specifically because you are a fan of the game and you know the game. So. I mean, so uh, I know as much as anyone who's who has watched who's watched this thing explode from you know from the perspective of you know the theory of videos and things on it and watching people figure all this stuff out. I, I I haven't played anything beyond the first one. However, I've already kind of spoken to things I disliked. Um, but again, this movie's not good by any means. The characters are are all forced in here because they have to make a movie. You can tell the plot to take the take the niece is was the dumbest thing in the world just to get four people that you can that you can kill inside of this inside of this rundown Chuck E. Cheese's like all this stuff is what I would put into into the the bad column right it, it, I don't like that stuff the middle of the movie is kind of odd with the whole you know everyone's friends for a little bit kind of thing I agree with you on that and it's just I mean conveniences are always hard to swallow but a movie like this needs them because it's hard to do this without changing the lore and there not be a lot of conveniences. So I think that, you know, I think that the good outweighs the bad as a fan of what's being done here. Not in the sense that like it makes the movie good. I, I agree with you. And I'm glad you brought that up with the convenience thing. Cause that's something that on this show we don't talk about enough of is some movies were okay with like for, for this movie, I'm okay with the plot conveniences being used, but in, 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 in a movie like again a very recent movie that will be considered for like six oscars killers of the flower moon 
some of those plot conveniences we can't let go without talking about because it that movie's trying to be, to be the, yeah there, there had to be a better way right yeah like, yeah yeah that's what i'm trying to say is like there. sometimes we accept them sometimes we don't and, and I, I think it's a great conversation that especially with in reference to a movie like five nights at freddy's how it's it's okay to accept plot convenience because if you're going to watch five nights at freddy's you you're going to watch it because you know of the source material. No one's stumbling into that. Like, oh, that looks fun. Let's go watch that tonight. Yeah. I saw the poster. Uh, it looks, looks interesting. I'm sure. I'm sure a couple people are, but like you know, yeah, it, yeah. The, the bulk I don't see of them. This is, I don't see yeah. them lasting more than an hour though before they leave. <laughs> I mean, honestly, yeah, do you? Do you? I mean, done. do you see like a? Do you see like a? I used to call them. We used to call them the 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 old couples. It was just they would look at a poster when I when I was a teenager working in a movie theater, and they would be like, "Oh, that looks fun. I'll we'll have two for that." I'm like, um, "That's that's, <laughs> that's a hard rated R. Like, are you sure about yeah, that? Yeah. You know, like I just don't see those guys sitting through this kind of thing unless you really kind yeah. of wanted to be there. But again, I'm yep. the box office for this movie is way more than I thought it was going to be. So I I, I thought bad. about a hundred. I thought about a hundred was going to be where it sat after two or three weeks, but it's it's over two hundred, and that's Good. that's impressive given how it's available for free on streaming. There's a chance this thing hits three. I mean, it, it it's a low chance, but it's it, it's it's going to climb. It's going to be above two fifty. It's going to be closer than further. You know what I mean? It's, it's kind of question for you because I I, I know that one of the several, several of the articles a couple of years ago when Dune came out on um, Max. Uh, Peacock must not be widely adopted yet. Uh, so Peacock is, I mean, it's not, it's probably one of the lower of the streaming services. Like, you know, it's, it's not in the big three for sure. It's not, it's not even in the big five. I don't, well, it, it might, it might be fifth compared to like its other options. Well, hold but, on. What do we, he, so Netflix, Amazon, yep. Disney plus yep. Hulu. Those are the big four. Yep. Those are four, yeah. I think Peacock's probably fifth. Well, what, what, and what's, what's bigger, Peacock or Paramount Plus? Peacock, easily. Okay, Peacock. Uh, only because you get Peacock if you have if if you're subscribed to Comcast. So because of that, it has it has artificial inflated numbers where you have to buy into into Paramount Plus, you know, no matter what. So and Peacock and its its scope is limited, right? It, it has a very small Peacock original, you know, offering. It has. It's just a lot of NBC stuff and what NBC owns. So it, it doesn't have. It's like Disney Plus, but smaller. I think is a good way to describe right, it for people that don't know what it is. Fair enough. But like you know, it's it has it has Universal is the big thing, and as and they're definitely leaning into that. So, but yeah, it's not. It's not. It's like I said, it's probably fifth in the overall you know market share, market penetration share. That's really interesting. Do you, do you because like you, you guys we, we keep talking about Paramount Plus kind of being phased out. Is like I'm so surprised by that's the first one to like be phased out, like the first big one to that, go. That, that, that's the first one to really come out and say, "Hey, we failed here, and we're gonna we're gonna pull out of it." There's been a lot of that have quietly just kind of like undid their you know their streaming platforms. There actually there's actually been more than you think, but um, Peacock has the unique advantage of the fact that it is tied to a cable company, right? So like theirs won't go away because it's just convenience for them. It, it's they already own everything they're putting into these places anyway. And their platform is already, they're already offering it for free, you know, to some degree to all of their customers. There's no reason to not just have it sitting there to make some extra money. So they have a unique advantage in that, in, in that space where they have, they have automatic customers. Whereas every other one of these, you know, they don't, I mean, I just got notified about the price increase that Netflix is going through by Netflix a couple of days ago. And I just got, and now I'm getting bombarded with warnings that I have to claim my devices in my house or I'll be, or my account will be suspended. So like, you know, Netflix is going a whole different route for, you know, the way it's treating its current customers. It's whereas man, I think it's going to hands it to people. That's going to be Netflix like for, for good or evil, that's going to have a huge impact on the, on the, um, the going forward on all the streaming platforms is going to be huge. They wouldn't do it if they didn't think they could afford it. So yeah, that's, that's but yeah, so, but yeah, but like like you know, Pe- Peacock isn't as big as what you might think it is, but it also isn't. It also has a lot of advantages for being connected to a uh, cable company. Also, Disney Plus is going up like fifty bucks a month here soon, or something. Disney Plus, something ridiculous, like way more than I'll a marginal f- increase. I'll find I'll find in the episode that I said it just because I like I love being right. But I, I said <laughs> Disney Plus is Disney Plus streaming platform is failing hard and the amount of money they're losing is absolutely astronomical. And I believe Roger said Disney will be just fine. 
Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> I think there's a lot happening. Well, there I, I mean, I don't think Disney. so. Just like I don't think, I mean, I don't, I mean, and th- th- this is a prime example. Like, I don't think Bud Light's fine either. I don't think Anna Anheuser-Busch is okay right now either, but that's a whole other issue. Yeah. But that's kind of the same thing as like, I don't think they're fine. And people said, oh, they'll be fine. Like, I don't think they're going to be fine for a long time. Listen, here's the thing. It, it, it's kind of it's kind of similar to, and this is the last thing I'll say about it because we, we're running along. But like, it's the same concept that I have that that movie that movies quote. You know, you can do whatever you want in your film, but you have to accept the ramifications that that follow. I you agree. have to be okay with the consequences of your decisions. And um, in this regard, for Disney and streaming platforms, um, they did they've been doing things a certain way for a long time now. And as soon as the investors have lost a lot of money. There will be ramifications. Oh, of that. course, yes, because, yes. Because because we we live in a, in an investor economy, and it's just not gonna. It's just not going well for Disney. As soon right as now. there's and one big dip, they say something changes, I'm, or I'm out. I'm ready to see what all the changes they have to make um, and all the pills they got to swallow. So it'll I'm be neat. Sure, there will be. An, it'll be an interesting thing. I mean, also the again, I I I, I say this because I, I think it's a huge thing. Of industry is the whole Snow White and Ra- Ra- Rachel Zegler thing that will also. Pay, I mean, for for good or bad, it'll, it'll pay dividends for the next few years. Of you see what happens? Like that's there. Everyone's going to use that as like a well. Look what happened to them. We don't want that. There's there are already two independent studios that have announced their own version of Snow White. Two. Yeah, I I think it's kind Let's of interesting. Well, look, we'll see how this shakes <laughs> out. But I mean, the whole like if you haven't followed the Rachel Zegler thing, I I if you're interested, you can find it all on Google. It's fine. But like, it's an interesting thing to see. Because it kind of goes by what you say all the time, Chris. Like you can say whatever you want as a person or as a company, but I mean, whatever comes after that, you've got to be okay with. So, yep. yeah. So anyway, uh, winding back to Five Nights at Freddy's, I guess some some final thoughts here before we score it is, um, I was how the movie plays out, and I want to talk about the the line of dialogue here. And the last this is the last my last yeah, yeah, thing I want to hit on is, and it's um, partway through through the I think it's like forty five, maybe fifty minutes in is he's got no choice. But to take his um his sister his little sister to work and because the babysitter's not there for a reason you'll find out but in 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 the, in the movie I mean but and she he's he's asleep um trying to do his dream sequence thing and she walks up to him asleep and says I'll be right back and I love Scream I think Scream from '96 is a masterpiece and one thing that Stu Matthew Lillard's character says or no. Jamie Kennedy says, as he's explaining the rules of surviving horror films, is you never say, I'll be right back, because you won't be right back. And then Matthew Lillard <laughs> immediately, as he as he as he kind of making fun of Jamie Kennedy, he goes, I'll be right back. And then kind of leaves the room. But like, well, I mean, you know who one of the killers is in Scream. And like, as soon as she says that, I knew exactly why Matthew Lillard was cast in this movie. I knew oh, exactly why. I mean, knew why. Like specifically, I, I think goes to probably more of his passion for the project. I would assume, but I mean, with the inclusion of Matt Pat and the Game Theory Channel, I think they weren't afraid to include a whole bunch of like tongue in cheek and like cameo references. Sure. I think is what it more. Sure, I, I guess I should rephrase that. Is like I knew that the four minutes of the screen time Matthew Lillard, Lillard had in the beginning wasn't wasn't going to be it. As soon as she, <laughs> yeah, as soon yeah, as she yeah. said that, I was like, up. Oh. I know exactly how this is going to play out, but also you got to realize too, like, like you know, the, the the original Saw movie in two thousand four. People love to, you know, do revisionist history and say, "Oh, I, I knew the whole time who he was the guy on the floor." Like, no, you didn't. No, you didn't. So don't even. You're a liar. I don't want to hear it anymore. You're a liar. But also, it's yeah, but right now. But, yeah, but also, but aren't right now. Go 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 ahead. Sorry. Aren't right now? Aren't you like being the 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 guy who's going to have revisionist history? You know what I mean? Like well, like, like you're, you're claiming is, to have known well, it. No. You know, as, as it went through. No, no, not not in Saw, but in Five Nights at Freddy's. As soon as that line was said, I know exactly how it's going to play out. However, what I'm going to say is, there's not too many characters here, <laughs> so I mean, someone's got to be. There's there, there 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 has to be other things moving. Is what I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, yeah. So someone's there's, someone's someone's the recognizable villain. <laughs> that's, that's what I'm saying. Is like even in Saw, like well, there's five characters in Saw, and three of them are dead. So someone's got to be. It's got to be somebody somewhere. You know what I mean? Like yeah, so yeah. when you, when you when you think back to it, it's like oh, that's quite obvious, but when you're in the movie at the time, it's not so obvious, but yeah. So yep. um, final thoughts of five minutes versus Freddy or five minutes of Freddy's is I'm very happy with it. I think it's a, um, 
it's a very worthy video game adaption that I'm I'm very happy that it's it's doing well for Blumhouse and th- this is going to be good for maybe some more horror games to be adapted. Um, mm-hmm. uh, I'm gonna but the, here's the thing, like here's the thing, that, and I did this last with 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 Mario. If you're looking at Five Nights at Freddy's with a critical lens, this movie's a three. But if you're looking at, I think as a video game adaption, which we don't is not a real scale anyway, but I'm going to say it is a fan of video games and the adaptions is this is like a seven or an eight. If you're, <laughs> if you're looking at it through the, through the lens of how faithfully was it adapted and still made sense. But again, mm-hmm. the official score is a three for me, but on the other lens, it's like a seven or an eight. I could easily see it. So yeah. I, I know some people okay. that were huge in, in the five nights of Freddy's. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. No. So uh, I think, what what this is, what this is doing for its fan base, I think, is probably the most important thing, in my opinion, that this movie's done. I think it's fantastic that people that are, are so into this got their movie. You know what I mean? They, they they wanted this seven years ago, right? And it just it wasn't the time. And even now, like like you know, the movie is not great. the 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 writing is bad. The sequencing is bad. The all of the you know all everyone's reasons for being where they are is bad. It's all forced. And there's tongue in cheek references and cameos all over the place in this thing, which, you know, is fun. And it's fun for the people that already love it. This, uh, so this is a Mortal Kombat three for me. Is what this is, right? Like this movie is a three, but it, goddamn, if, if you're here for what, you know, the right reasons, you're going to love this movie. It, it's, 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 it's going to be what you want. It's going to be what you're looking for. If you don't like this, what this is about, if you don't like Five Nights at Freddy's, if you don't know what the hell that is, that what us old old gamer dudes are talking about, you're going to hate this movie. Don't watch it. Don't watch it. Don't write a bad review on it because you walked into something that you had no idea that you saw it score on. It's just not for you. It's never going to be. But for the people that really wanted this thing and you had to wait 10 years to get it, Man, you guys got a you guys got a a cool movie that pays a lot of respect to where this movie comes from originally, and that's really cool to see. I'm down for that. This movie's a three. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean that's a long winded way of saying three, sure. But you're you're, yeah. you're, you're, you're you're right about the Mortal Kombat thing because that's accurate. Like that's like yeah. the, the most funnest three ever is Mortal Kombat. Yeah, like yeah, I'll, I'll watch Mortal Kombat anytime I see it, and I'll trash on that film, but goddamn, I'll have fun watching it. It's so weird. Do it's you, such a weird feeling. Do you think that the success of Five Nights at Freddy's will have some kind of reignited? for the game for at least a little while it'll be another boost in sales i promise you they have already like their sale numbers have gone up yeah i guarantee you that's already happened well good I'm, I'm <laughs> like there's no way it hasn't it should i mean I'm, I'm glad that it did it's a, again it's one of those things like, i can see it really doing very well for the games you said there's oh, many yeah. f- there's multiple games right five oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Three, five something yep. like that. at okay. least five five like like four and some spinoffs well, good. That's I'm I'm happy that that is doing. That's going to be healthy because video games. Again, I, I I respect them, and I, I I wish we got better movies more often of adaptions because there's so many great stories to tell in that in the video game space. So, oh yeah, I'm not saying it's a good story. I'm saying it's a good adaption of Five Nights at Freddy's. <laughs> See here. Okay, so hold on. So I'll, I'll give you some numbers right now. On Steam charts, the original Five Nights at Freddy's over the last year has been flatlined right from november 28th 2022 has had about the same user count all the way through a small dip in may of 2022 no april 2023 which is when the movie was announced keep that in mind and then when you get to where we are it goes from it goes from 200 monthly users to to 15,000 monthly users that's a active. massive that's a massive game. right now it's huge, yeah. So this game is absolutely—it's it, going to reap the benefits of it, one thousand percent. And, and, you know and it's, like, it's, it. like, it's like a second win, so it's just more—it's just pure profit at this point. For yep. yeah, well, I'm, I'm, I'm glad. Yeah. I'm glad the Blumhouse has has a hit. I'm glad their their low budget for massive box office return still is still it does ring true for a lot of movies. So I'm I'm glad for that. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm glad. Uh, and this is, I mean, one last. I, well, I guess I meant to ask this in the main review in the main conversation, but I mean, does this? Does this satisfy your Halloween horror movie need? Um, maybe not my horror movie need because the movie is, like I said, it's tropey and predictable. But I mean, again, I don't want this for a Halloween need. I want this for a video game nerd need, and it it yeah. it, it definitely does exactly needs to do there. That's that's a fair way to put it. Uh, I, yeah. I I agree with you. This was this was meant to be like the big scary movie for the Halloween season. 
So I mean, that's, I mean, that's the whole thing. But it, it ain't that. But you know, it's all right. <laughs> but it's free on Peacock, so go watch it. There you go. There you go. All right. This has been episode three hundred and fifty-five A of For the Love of Cinema, a movie podcast. Each new episode posts every Tuesday and Friday at 5 a.m. on the podcast service of your choice of the following five. Apple Podcasts, Podbean, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music. Please leave a comment or two, rate, subscribe. Every little bit helps. More importantly, thank you very much for listening. Check out the show on Twitter, at Love Cinema Pod. I'm at Grayson Maxwell One. I'm Christopher Bond. Where's Roger? Roger. Oh, he's at Rod Stillian. And Chris has no X. <laughs> Don't forget to check us out on Facebook, always posting things on social media. Send us an email to for the love of cinema podcast at gmail.com. And next week, we're doing a double streaming week, both on, no, are they both on Netflix? I know Sly, Sly's, oh yeah, yeah, they are, they are. All the Light You Cannot See, it's a, it's, it's a miniseries uh, based in World War II on Netflix, and Sly on Netflix dealing with Sylvester Stallone, so I'm, uh, I'm really, I'm really looking forward to the Sly one. I've already seen the all, all the light you cannot see. I'm really looking forward to Sly as well. Hugh Laurie, I want you to be my dad. You hear that, Hugh Laurie?